What's good guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm at a local football club, uh, really close to where I grew up actually, so that's pretty cool. Um, they've had a hot food um, hut put in, um, which is wicked, but the load calcs were completely wrong, so the supply wasn't adequate. Um, the floodlights obviously nick a lot of juice already as it is, um, and they just didn't have enough capacity. So since then, um, a lot of appliances have been swapped for gas. Um, we're changing around the circuits to make them a bit more efficient. Um, and yeah, we're putting the supply in as well. The cable was already running for us. It's just a little 10 mil supply. And there's a DB that's been put in as well by someone else. So we're gonna casterize over that, make sure it's all sweet, change some circuits around, like I say, cause you've got the same appliance across two phases and just stuff like that, which doesn't quite add up um, and put the supply away into a buzz bar chamber in there. So if you're through a switch fuse, so um, yeah, should be interesting. As always guys, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit that bell button. Really supports the channel and what I'm trying to do. Um, and yeah, it just means you'll never miss a video as well if you're enjoying the content. Yeah, let's get to it. So before we get started with this supply, they've brought the armoured through the right hand side. Yeah. But the earth has been taken up over here. So we're going to pull that back through. You can get under here. We're going to pull that back through and then hopefully get it through this side as well just to let they come through together. But we shall see. So I've recently gone all Milwaukee. I had a lot of M12 gear anyway. Um, but yeah, I've gone all out Milwaukee. <laughs> Sold all my 12 gear. Um, I'm gonna do like a video on it just because I've got loads of it. Um, I'm really chuffed with it all. So I'm still waiting on a few bits as well coming from America that were imports just because they're not quite out over here yet. Um, so yeah, but I'll show you all of that. It's, uh, it's cool stuff. So I've got to get under here. This is um, an isolator that was put in by a generator company just to temporarily supply that so that'll all come out. We're gonna go into here. Um, yeah, not sure what's going on there. Um, we're gonna go into here um, and that feeds our board, which is just inside here. So yeah, the supply is just bagged up. We're gonna have to knock out this, um, where it's been concreted in for that little bit, just to gain that slack. So that it will then be long enough, just cause for some reason now it's not long enough. But yeah, I've got to get under there to um, try get this earth sorted out. So let's go do that. Taken that up there. Okay. Uh -oh. Someone was obviously a little bit short. Uh, is there space to take the 10 mil up there as well? Okay. Is there space to take the 10 mil up here as well? Probably not, is there? Um, hmm. So, like I said before, the SWA is coming out there. The earth is coming out over there. We're just gonna drill. Either way, we'd have to drill a hole to bring them up together. So we're just gonna drill a new hole directly below this bus bar chamber. Um, and then we can just come up into a switch fuse isolator that gets mounted to this. Um, and then, yeah, it's just a lot easier, a lot tidier. So that is the plan. This is the M12 rocket light. Even just lit up today. One of my favourite bits, actually. One of my favourite new bits. Dead Andy. I've got other lights, but you always have your Milwaukee battery, all your power tool batteries charged, um, just out of habit. So that's why I like it. So Jake's just drilling through now. 
I'll take this off. Um, Jake's just drilling through now. I'm going to go under and um, yeah, wait to uh, see him pop through basically. And then we'll reroute them cables. Um, they've given us a rotary isolator rather than a switch fuse isolator, so standard wholesaler. So yeah, we're going to have to um, get that swapped over and then um, get that swapped over and then I can start making off all that in there. Um, and then we'll, we'll take a little look at the T-Hut. Yes, mate. Yeah, boy. Yeah, that'll do ya. Um, yeah. Yeah, cool. I just gotta run back down some tie wraps to sort this out, but yeah, we're sweet, mate. So, yeah, at least they're being brought out the same side now. Um, so it can be presented on the on the right side of the room round to the buzz bar chamber. Just gonna get some tie wraps to tidy this up. Um, try to get a cleat on it on the side of that column or something. Right, so we've just got back from the wholesalers. Um, we're all done down below now as well. So these two cables, although they come through separate holes, gonna get tied together, um, get presented onto this wall via a couple of cleats. And then, um, yeah, we're gonna have an enclosure here with a breaker in it, which is here. Um, it's rather than a, than a barrel fuse isolator, we've opted for something like this. Um, so this will get bolted to the bottom, coupled and bushed through to the bottom of the chamber, armoured in the bottom, um, and then yeah, breaker in there. We've got a blank as well, just it's a four four way um, opening on the lid. So yeah, I'm going to start on that. Um, I can't really show you, I can't really show you too much pitch side. So um, I'm going to focus the majority of the video on in here. Um, hopefully it makes a good one. Hopefully it stays interested enough, and I can show you what the inside of one of these looks like as well. Um, we'll get that isolated properly. To get started, we want to get the isolator. Um, sized up with this buzz bar chamber so i'm going to want to isolate it here get the cover off this prove it all dead and stuff and then um yeah start start getting that mounted so it's a tncs system it comes in via these three fuse holders here through the meter through this four pole isolator around these lovely tails into the side of this proteus switch then by all accounts it comes out of the top of this proteus switch down and into this buzz bar chamber to to supply it um so yeah i'm gonna turn it off here um i could also just go double and, and turn it off there but it's not really necessary um so yeah that's turned off there i'm now going to get gloved up get the cover off of this um and then yeah prove this dead and then we can safely work in that chamber um and start start getting that isolator mounted and getting that cable blended into it. So yeah, let's get let's get gloved up. So I've got the Marigolds. These are Boddington's Electrical. Um, they aren't available on the website at the minute, but they will be soon. So if that changes, I'll put a link link in the description. Um, and then we go over them with some arc gloves. So these are just flash rated basically. Um, just so that it doesn't, if it goes off, it doesn't melt the marigolds to your hands. Um, I've got a face mask in the van as well, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, to be honest with you. So yeah, we'll, um, we'll get these on. Testers are out, yeah, I'll be able to get them out after. 
So yeah, that just gives you two layer protection basically. You've got your um, your insulating layer and then you've just got an extra layer for a dark flash. So yeah, I'll get the cover off of this now. Nice and loose. the inside of this so completely exposed so yeah no excuse for working live anyway but definitely not in here so we'll just prove dead now right so um these are this is the safe isolation kit from uh, tis test instrument solutions i'll put their website in the description um they sent these out to me to give them a go um and in the kit you get a set of approved testers a proven unit and you also get everything you need to lock off quite a varied selection of switches not everything but almost everything um so we're going to start by just proving these um so yeah 700 37 volts then we're going to jump into this buzz bar chamber and do a 10 point test so we're going to start by going onto the earth first and then we're going to go between all three phases one two three we'll also do the neutral at that point as well we're actually getting continuity between earth and everything so it probably means this isolator is a bit smarter than it looks and it's dumping everything down to earth in the off position um, which isn't a bad thing so now we're going to go between neutral again going on what would be assumed to be the deadest point first and then between all three phases again again getting continuity so that's made up seven of the ten um, and we've gone between effectively earth and all conductors, neutral and all conductors. Now we're going to move on to phase to phase. So we're going to jump onto L1. We're going to go between L2 and L3. And then we're also going to go between L2 and L3 independently. That makes up your 10 points of your test. And we've basically gone between earth and everything neutral and everything and all combinations of phases as well just to prove that there's absolutely no voltage in there then we're going to do the most important bit of the process which is proving your testers afterwards so we get them in here proven again that they're working we're happy with them we, we can trust that these have done the job that they need to um and then yeah we'll uh, we'll happily be able to work in there now with the gloves off um, so yeah Take them off um, and we'll get cracking. So um, I haven't got any of these, unfortunately. Um, we do try and keep hold of them when we do strip outs and stuff because they are um, they're just like gold dust, especially on these old MEM ones. Um, but yeah, I haven't got any, so I'm gonna have to double up like many of these people have. <laughs> um, that's a great connection there. Look at it, lovely. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to double up. Um, on yeah i'm not sure what ones but i'll pick a few um l1 looks quite busy um but yeah that's nothing to do with us so yeah my isolator is probably going to be better on this side um, but we've got this bt box here so i think i'll go in the middle um in the middle drill through um isolator there few cleats down um, for this and this to go into and we'll put all that away it's nice and tight in this cupboard so it's going to be fun um, we'll also put that trunk and lid back on I thought it was missing but it is there so yeah we'll put that back on when we're done as well because we don't want that exposed but yeah I'm going to um, start prepping the isolator getting it sized up um, so that I can um, yeah drill a hole into the bottom of that chamber so got two 25 mil holes um, that need to be presented in this so I think we'll go bottom left and top right um, that will give us um, separation 
which is good um, space wise one cable down one side one cable down the other but it will also mean that um, yeah this can be as tight to the to the right of the chamber as possible which is what we want really because that's where the most space is um, so yeah I'm just going to smash these knockouts now out now It's about getting this whole pack out system. It's just trying to be a lot more organised um, because, yeah, I was terrible. But, um, yeah, it's a lot better. Still getting used to it, but definitely a lot better. So I want you. screwed on and then we want combi drill this is probably one of the tools I need the least to be honest with you at the M12 range um, it's good don't get me wrong it is good, but in my opinion, you still need an 18 volt drill if you're um, if you're doing any sort of metal work. But yeah, it still works. Don't get me wrong. Still good. At, still good at cutting holes and stuff. But um, yeah, it's just not man enough for certain tasks. filed off as best as it can be so now I'm going to get this in that place is terrible terribly aligned get that in um, we'll get this loosely hanging off of here we can then mark up our holes and um, this can get mounted start getting the arm bent Saying. Not a lot. I'm just about to do this heater. Yeah. Did Johnny have a look underneath that shelf? Because there's like a there's conduit going across and a double socket down there and everything. Just uh, maybe speak to him, mate. You might have not have done. Um, what are you thinking for just stuff being in the way? Are you thinking about utilising that circuit? It's last drilled, we're going to get it plugged up now, um, get that mounted. So like I was saying, we're being more organised with the pack out, I've got a load of these little trays. Um, these are like the half ones. This one I've got sort of set up as just an uh, everyday fixings box, washers, plasterboard fixings, red plugs, brown plugs. Um, but yeah, I love um, how modular it is. Obviously these aren't cheap fixings trays. Um, the fact that it all clips together and it can be carried in in one go um, with the rest of my kit and stuff like that is a massive deal for me. Um, I've also got the pack out mounts in the van so it can all get clipped into the van and stuff and, and it ain't going nowhere. So yeah, it's a big investment um, but like I say, so, so organised. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I, I couldn't go back now. Definitely couldn't go back now. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's the best system that that I've come across to be honest with you but yeah let's get this mounted anyway um, so I've got three of you 
three penny washers. Um, right, that's ready to go. Let's get this in here. So you guys um, should let us know as well. I'm not sure if I talk too much, too little. If you want um, me to explain myself more or shut up and get on with it, um, let us know because I want to be helpful, informative. Um, I also don't want to be annoying um, and make the videos boring. So yeah, let us know. Um, any feedback would be much much appreciated this is where this thing really shines situations like this don't need to do the same up top so luckily um, I managed to slightly oversize that so that it came through at the same distance um, rather than sitting on awkwardly on top of the lip um, so yeah I don't know if you can see without the shadow and then pushed through then we're just in there so probably going to pick this left hand knockout for the armoured and um, come along cleat it in there i'm going to put another stuffing gland next to it um, for the earth So because this enclosure comes with two 25mm knockouts, I'm using a 25mm whisker gland, um, but in it I'm going to put one of these windsert reducers. Um, you can get these um, from any wholesaler that sells whisker to be honest, but they're dead handy. You can get ones for flat cables, um, dual ones for like two daters, all sorts of stuff. Um, so yeah, instead of trying to drill a 20mm hole within a 25mm knockout, which 9 times out of 10 goes wrong, um, I can just put this in and it... It keeps the hole sweet, um, but yeah, it also grabs the cable as it should, so yeah, dead handy. I did, they gave me like a kit with loads in, but I'm pretty sure when you get them, they come like in bags of, yeah, whatever ones you've got. So, yeah, beauty of them is, is they literally just slide in. Sometimes you have to remove these because they've got like a little lip on them, but yeah, they just slide in. And then, uh, yeah, that will compress correctly. Um, so next up, we're going to start sizing up this armoured. A um, couple of cleats along this wall, and then it's going to go in the bottom. So the earth will just get tied to it after that. So yeah, we can do that now. So we're using these Firefly cleats. Um, they're just real low profile metal fire rated cleats. Um, so yeah again available from any decent wholesalers i spoke about them a lot on my instagram quite a while ago um but they're yeah just a metal fire rated solution um for armored and swa um real low profile they look really neat as well i'll show you them um show you them when they're all mounted but yeah far better than um yeah your standard cleats they look a lot better too and they're fire rated so yeah real nice So with smaller armoureds like this one, sometimes it's easier to just run the armoured against the enclosure. That will then give you a mark where you want to start your gland. Obviously you want to offset that a little bit. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but yeah, you can spend a lot of time just sizing it up when really just something like that will just give you exactly what you need. So yeah, we'll get out this little hole and trim this off now. Um, right, we'll stop blending that off. 
Um, these are the client knives that we've been selling on Loadout. Um, I'll put a link to Loadout in the description. It's my tool shop, um, bearing assisted, so bordering on the edge of a flick knife, but not quite a flick knife. Um, but yeah, I think they're like 36 quid or so, and everyone's been going mad for them. Um, so I'll put the link for them in the description. But yeah, KYC a check supply when you buy one of them. So um, that's where I marked it on the enclosure. Obviously, that is the enclosure itself. Um, so when it actually comes to using this, we're going to set this a little bit lower to account for the fact that that marks the enclosure. Then we need to allow for the, the nut part, the thread part, and then just onto this bit here. So it actually leaves you about there. Um, so, yeah, you just want to account for that basically, otherwise your gland will actually be too long. So now that I've marked it, you can see we're a good... Um, like 25 mil off of that now. Um, so yeah, just grab my junior, we'll start scoring around the outside of the armoured. Right, so yeah, we've got our inner sheath exposed, our arm rings cut, and then our outer. So now we're going to put on the shoe, the boot, the shroud, whatever you want to call it. Um, I always just sort of eye it up, especially on smaller glands. Um, tight as possible um, basically there you go perfect and then we want to allow um, we want to get our base of our brand on first to make life a bit easier um, and then we want to allow you know a general rule is a thumbnail um, but it's about 20 mil basically give or take um, especially when these bigger brands um, 20 mil um, of armoured showing now, ready to be received by the gland. twist just to free up them arm rings as much as you can um, and this wants to slide down slide on look at that first time that um, it's less in there make sure it's twisted coming out nice and straight which it is and then get this bit of the gland back on nice and hand tight which you should be able to go most of the way if you've um, on a gland this size if you've, um, if you've done a good enough job and then you just want to crank it up at the end some grips um, these are great for glanding and um, one they got to about 52 mil so it's like having a glanding spanner and two they don't chew up the glands because of the flat sort of jaws on them I've raved about these in a, in a previous video as well um, yeah, just set them to the right size, like so. So that one is 27. Now just 
slide our boot on. Leave it there and we're happy. So now we're going to get the other armor out. Unscrew this. I'm just going to use this um, gland to mark my banjo. So go in there. Facing forward, cross a bit, grab our hem. There we go. Cool. So, before anything else gets in the way, slide through as well. Should be unlocked, mate. There we go. So yeah, just gonna um, drill this out before the armor's in the way. Get that started. Chuck us those glasses, mate. Nice one. I've got a round file, which is great for sort of 10mm holes and stuff like that, 6mm holes. The reason I'm using a flat one is I'm trying to take a bit of paint off as I do it as well, just to ensure that banjo is getting a nice, nice good connection to the metal casing um, and therefore to earth. Happy with that. Right, so just going to um, strip this back beforehand as well just because it's far easier to do it out of the enclosure so we just want to leave about 10 to 20 mil of the inner sheath on I'm going to go dead careful here especially with a knife like this so that we don't damage any of the inner cores just scoring we're going to do most of the work when we actually yank um, but yeah we're just sort of scoring the cable. Like so. Um, a good reason to overstrip is slat. When you are doing this, you can go far too deep at the end. Um, where you actually cut the cores, but makes it easier to peel it off and because you've got that slack it doesn't matter if you sort of damage any other cores. Like so. I've got a normal one, that'll do. Yeah. Yeah, good for stainless. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're decent, mate. Are you using a little lava? Uh, you can have it, mate. Here. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Got any uh, tape? Uh, I do, but it's in that little shed on my frozen. Yeah, no worries. You got any white tape? Yeah. Banging. So um, I'll just show you where this was a real nice pill, which is what you prefer. Um, this is just super soft, so with all the best intentions in the world, it still splits. I'm just going to put some tape around that just to neaten it up. 
um, over tape it a bit as well probably won't need to actually but when these um, if your holes are proper chewed up big reason to leave that on it's like you don't damage the inner cores um, but then it's a pain to strip inside the enclosure so a good thing to do is to strip it down to the bare cores but then tape it up so you can get that in remove the tape um, and then yeah, you don't damage the cores but I'll be all right here because I'm using a knockout and it's not really a big one that you're wrestling with but yeah just wait for Jake to uh, grab that tape Roughly held where we want it, we get that sort of finger tight, but we don't want to go all the way yet until we've got the banjo bolted down. Um, so there's two ways to go about this. Um, first of all, you want to be using a brass um, nut and bolt. A lot of people use roofers, yeah, it does work, um, but yeah, we want to be using brass, it just looks better. Um, it's a better connection, and stuff like that. Um, so that's going to sit through going to point it downwards um, if I was bolting onto it on the inside I'd point it upwards but I'm not going to um, this I'll, I'll do a test but um, this armoured sheath in um, this earth in this case is earthed I'll test between the two and I'll get 0 0.01 um, I know I will and I will do that anyway there's no need to take an earthing from here if it's specced or if it's a bigger cable or something like that um, but no, it's it's fine, it's earthed, it's all at the same potential. Uh, I'm going to do two nuts, um, which again might seem like overkill, but it means you've got one doing um, the actual tightening, um, and then you've got one locking that nut in, um, which again just means it's not going, it's going nowhere, you know. Um, so yeah, that first one's on. Um, and then I've put my second one somewhere here. Um, so that's just gonna act as a locking nut basically, just to um, tighten that one on. Like so. And there you have it. Now that we're happy that that banjo's locked in place and not gonna move around, we can just nip this, um, nip this armoured gland up. So, um, yeah, bolt through there, not protruding or anything like that. Um, and yeah, it's just under there, double nutted. Um, so, just try and tighten this up with one hand. So, I'm going to fold these out of the way for now. Um, and then we'll look at getting our switch mounted um, our tails through into the chamber um, to feed that MCB um, and then we'll put these away into the bottom and uh, those into the top I'm pretty sure yeah that's how it will land um, because breakers are actually polarity sensitive with an in and out so um, yeah we'll make sure we do that right um, put the cover on we'll get the earth in now as well it's just going to tie onto these I'm going to get another cleat on this um, just wherever basically Right, I'm just gonna have a bit of a regroup because I feel like I've got every single tool in the world out of the minute. Um, great tip with bags of tie wraps, if you cut them across here, they don't fall all over the place. You can just easily grab out whatever you need. Um, rather than the other way when you tie wrap round them um, and then they turn upside down and all fall out all over the gaff so yeah I'm just 
tighten that up now. Right, cool. So um, I'm just going to grab my super snips um, to get them all cut off flush. But yeah, basically rise up into this stuffing gland. You can see nice tight compression around that. Um, and that's in there as well now. So um, yeah, going to cut them tie wraps. That's the bottom part of the isolate formed. Going to start getting the tails through into the chamber. Um, getting them put away here. And then we'll do that bit last. Right, back after some lunch. I better turn that on before I get copyrighted. Um, but yeah, so I've got um, 16 mils in and out. Um, these are dressed up, dressed up into here. This is the best way I can see doing it is um, forming these in the back, bringing them through the middle of those two buzz bars and taking them all to their um, respective points. Gonna have to use this earth bolt there probably just because the earth bar is completely used up. Um, and there isn't a spare one, so yeah, gonna have to bolt it on there. Um, got a load of lugs, got two sizes, but they are eights, like we thought. So yeah, get these, um, do this side first, get it torqued up, put away, and then um, yeah, we'll get these stripped, lugged up, and torque them onto the bus bar. So yeah, that's gonna need you. Also, going to need a screwdriver out of here. Break is sitting on the right hand side. I'm just going to clip this blank in now just to line all that up. It's going to be tight, but I need to get the, the three phases in the bottom here, get them torqued up, then get these into the top. Um, use the uh, bars for the neutral and earth, and then yeah, we'll get these bolted on and torqued up. So, first things first, just get the neutral out the way up there. Same with the earth. There, get that slid across to where it wants to be, and now uh, get this back in, back into where it wants to be, which is about about there. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna wrestle these uh, phases in the bottom now, and I'll pick up that lot afterwards. So these um, MCBs are rated at 2.8. Newton meters of torque on the terminals, and that's what that's uh, just from last time, anyway. So that's good to go. I'm gonna try and pirouette these in so there's a bit of slack there for future. That's the three in the bottom. And I'm just going to put this neutral and earth wet up the top, and then we'll get these lot in there as well. Right, so wasn't that a pig? Um, 
enclosure's way too small to be honest for what we're trying to do but yeah that's what happens when you've got outdated systems um with small supplies coming off of them i guess but yeah it's in it's talked up um it could be better but you know it does a job um and it's compliant so yeah that's all that matters um yeah you're only going to get it so neat when it's that tight with 16 mils to be honest with you but yeah we'll get the cover on that now and then i'll start putting these away in the buzz bar chamber so for l1 it's looking favorite up there for l2 that one's looking favorite and for l3 i think it's gonna be this one i don't know if i want to get involved with that there um yeah well um hmm. that or yeah we put another one on top of there i think that's going to be favorite for l3 um and for the neutral we'll just pick up one of these ones again with just one on so yeah possibly that one so I'm just going to tie up the uh, 16 mils onto this tail here, um, just to keep them away from the buzz bar. Obviously, it's all insulated, but it's just to give it, um, yeah, a bit of distance. So we'll start with brown. Get you looped onto there, so it's snipped about there. These off, you slide on. Be there. Right, okay. Just got to put the earth away into that one. And then we are done. So this is the M12 uh, torque wrench. So I'm gonna get these all torqued up. Um, we use this for a lot of our MOD and specialist work, but um, yeah, I like to get out as much as I can, to be honest with you. Um, so MEM don't actually specify torque rating just because it was back in the days of old where um, it'd be as tight as, as your arms would allow. But um, Schneider use exactly the same buzz bar se uh, system in their um, buzz bar chambers, and it's about 40 newton meters. So that's what I'm gonna go for. Um, just for a bit of a bit of um, integrity in it really um, yeah it's probably unnecessary but it's cool isn't it <laughs>
changeover. 17 mil. So there you have it, um, these put away, um, they're as far away as they can be, um, yeah it's not ideal, it's good to keep hold of these for this exact reason, so you haven't got to double up and triple up and stuff, but needs must, um, so yeah, I'm going to lock this off now, um, so that, that supply can be left isolated while this gets re-energised and we'll get all this back on, um, and then go put it away at the other end. Right, so that's locked off. I'm going to take this padlock off and put it on there, but first I'm going to put the cover back on this. It's quite cool, look. My rating plate. No date on it, I don't think. No. no. It's cool. The, um, the buzz bar ratings, look. 142 BBC and all that sort of stuff is quite cool. This insulation should be turned into a free unit once. After connection, they ensure the cable ends and positions of screws do not reduce the electrical clearance below 19mm to earth in air between phases in air 19mm. Mm. We're okay, but I don't know about other people. Alright. Let's get this back on. While it's isolated, I'm going to use this opportunity to try and get this back on as well, just because that wants to be on. Big flat, big flat. That'll do. Better than where we found it anyway. Right. So, let's remove this off of here. Put this onto here. Happy days. And this can go on. So, let's say everything sorts its life out. Um, we're happy with that. So now I'm gonna have a bit of a tidy up because I've got gear everywhere. Um, we'll go out and see Jake, see how he's getting on. Right, so I'm gonna call it a day for the video now. Um, the rest of the work's pitch side, basically I can't film too much over there. Um, and I think I've done every everything that you guys are gonna find interesting anyway. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, as always guys, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit that bell button, really supports what I'm trying to do, support the channel and all that stuff. Um, yeah, hope you've enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, I'll catch you on the next one.